Nigeria Airways Flight 2120 was a chartered passenger flight from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, to Sokoto, Nigeria on of July 1991, which caught fire shortly after takeoff from King Abdulaziz International Airport and crashed while attempting to return for an emergency landing, killing all 247 passengers and 14 crew members on board. The aircraft was a Douglas DC-8 operated by Nationair for Nigeria Airways. Flight 2120 is the deadliest accident involving a DC-8 and remains the deadliest aviation disaster involving a Canadian airline. Aircraft and crew The aircraft involved in the accident was a 1968 Douglas DC-861, CGMXQ, owned by the Canadian company Nollis Air, usually operated by Nation Air. At the time of the accident, it was being wet-leased to Nigeria Airways, which in turn sub-leased it to Hold Trade Services to transport Nigerian pilgrims to and from Mecca. William Allen, the 47-year-old pilot in command, a former Canadian Air Force pilot, had logged 10,700 flight hours and 1,000 hours in type. Kent Davidge, the 36-year-old first officer, had logged 8,000 flight hours, of which 550 hours were in type, and Victor Fair, the 46-year-old flight engineer, had logged 7,500 flight hours, of which 1,000 hours were in type. The DC-8 was the primary aircraft type used by the airline. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Accident. The aircraft departed King Abdulaziz International Airport bound for Sadiq Abu Bakar III International Airport in Sokoto, but problems were reported shortly after takeoff. Unknown to the crew, the aircraft had caught fire during departure, and though the fire itself was not obvious since it started in an area without fire warning systems, the effects were numerous. Pressurization failed quickly, and the crew was deluged with nonsensical warnings caused by fire-related circuit failures. In response to the pressurization failure, Allen decided to remain at 2,000 feet, but the flight was cleared to 3,000 feet as a result of the controller mistaking Flight 2120 for a Saudi flight that was also reporting pressurization problems due to Captain Allen mistakenly identifying as Nation Air 2120 rather than Nigerian 2120. A mix-up that lasted for three minutes but was ultimately found not to have had any effect on the outcome. Amidst this, First Officer Davidge, who had been flying CGMXQ out, reported that he was losing hydraulics. The crew only became aware of the fire when a flight attendant rushed into the cockpit reporting, "...smoke in the back real bad." Shortly afterwards, Davidge reported that he had lost ailerons, forcing Allen to take control. As Allen took over, the cockpit voice recorder failed. At this moment, the air traffic controller realized that Flight 2120 was not the Saudi Air flight and was in trouble, and directed them towards the runway. Allen subsequently contacted air traffic control multiple times, among his pre-mortem communications being a request for emergency vehicles. When the aircraft was about 18 kilometers (11 miles) from the airport and at an altitude of 671 meters (2,201 feet), a point where the landing gear could conceivably have been lowered, it began to experience an in-flight breakup and a number of bodies fell from it, indicating that the fire by that time had consumed at least partially, the cabin floor. Just 2,875 metres feet short of the runway, the melting aircraft finally became uncontrollable and crashed, killing whatever portion of the 261 occupants on board—including 247 passengers—had not already suffocated or fallen out of the aircraft. Nine of the 14 crew were identified, but, no attempt was made to identify the passengers. As of July 2017, the accident remains the deadliest crash involving a Douglas DC-8, as well as the second deadliest accident taking place on Saudi Arabian soil after Saudi Air Flight 163.
Topic: <coughs> Cause. <coughs> 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 Prior to departure, the lead mechanic had noticed that the number two and number four tire pressures were below the minimum for flight dispatch and attempted to inflate them, but no nitrogen gas was readily available, and the project manager, unwilling to accept a delay, disregarded the problem and readied the aircraft for dispatch. As the aircraft was taxiing, the transfer of the load from the underinflated number no. two tire to the number no. one tire on the same port side axle resulted in over deflection, overheating, and structural weakening of the number no. one tire. The number no. one tire failed very early on the takeoff roll, followed almost immediately by the number no. two. The latter stopped rotating for reasons not established and the subsequent friction of the wheel assembly with the runway generated sufficient heat to start a self-sustaining fire. The crew realized there was a problem, but not the nature or seriousness of it. The aircraft was not equipped with fire or heat sensors in the wheel assembly. The first officer was recorded remarking, "'We got a flat tire, you figure?' According to Canadian Transportation Safety Board members interviewed for an episode of Mayday about the accident, standard procedures regarding tire failure during the takeoff roll on the DC 8 did not include rejecting takeoff for tire or wheel failures, so the captain proceeded with the takeoff. Due to common jet aircraft design, the accident became inevitable the moment the landing gear was retracted, mere seconds after takeoff and long before an emergency became apparent. When this occurred, burning rubber was brought into close proximity with hydraulic and electrical system components, causing the failure of both hydraulic and pressurization systems that led to structural damage and loss of control of the aircraft. The Transportation Safety Board later concluded, had the crew left the landing gear extended, the accident might have been averted. Fuel probably introduced as a result of burn through of the center fuel tank intensified the fire which eventually consumed the cabin floor people began falling out of the aircraft when their seat harnesses burned through despite the considerable destruction to the airframe the aircraft appeared to have been controllable until just before the crash it was discovered during the investigation that mechanics had known about the under-inflated tires since 7 July but the project manager, who had no relevant training to inform his decisions, had prevented maintenance on the tires because the aircraft was behind schedule, leading them to record false pressure readings in the log to make the aircraft seem airworthy. This meant that the cockpit crew was not aware of information that not only had serious safety implications, but that colleagues were aware of but nation air executives had pressured them into withholding. <laughs> <laughs> Aftermath Soon after the accident, a group of Toronto-based Nationair flight attendants pulled funds to create a memorial plaque, inscribed with the names of the victims. The memorial, complete with a cherry tree planted to commemorate their colleagues who died in Jeddah, was given a permanent home at the head office of the Greater Toronto Airports Authority. The air crash, combined with Nationair's poor reputation for on time service and mechanical problems, led to serious problems with public image and reliability among tour operators. These difficulties were compounded when Nationair locked out its unionized flight attendants and proceeded to replace them with strikebreakers on 19 November 1991. The lockout lasted 15 months and by the time it ended in early 1993, Nationair found itself in severe financial trouble. At the time, Nationair owed the Canadian government millions of dollars in unpaid landing fees. Creditors began seizing aircraft and demanded cash up front for services. The company was declared bankrupt in May 1993, owing CDN $75 million. In 1997, Robert Obadia, owner of Nationair and its parent company Nollis Air, pleaded guilty to eight counts of fraud in relation to the company's activities. Dramatization <laughs> <laughs> An episode of Mayday entitled, Under Pressure, covered this accident. 
Topic See also Air France Flight 4590 A 2000 Concorde crash caused by an in flight fire triggered by tyre burst on takeoff. Aviation safety List of accidents and incidents involving airliners by location. List of accidents and incidents involving commercial aircraft. Mexicana Flight 940 A 1986 crash involving landing gear fire. Swiss Air Flight 306 A 1963 crash caused by an in flight fire triggered by a landing gear failure on takeoff. ValueJet Flight 592 A 1996 crash caused by an in flight fire in the cargo hold.